financial services related. Yeah, I call it the No BS channel because you know what? I talked the last couple of weeks. I was going to put across the little streaming tape here. I had that capability now, by the way. But I was going to put across the little streaming tape here of all the agents that we've onboarded the last couple of weeks. This industry is booming. It's on fire. The word's getting out about our new Agent Success Academy. Well, we're a case by case, day to day, you know, paint by the number system, plug and play, really, to teach all of our agents the long term success skills necessary to be in this business, which is, by the way, if you work in the lead program, is final expense and mortgage session. We all know that those aren't products, they're solutions, right? We sell life insurance, we sell term and whole life. But listen, I had a chance to talk to a lot of you the last couple of weeks. I've been very, very busy. I uh, kind of neglected a little bit of, my, of, of, of you folks uh, by not putting as much content up, but I hope that the break will be uh, worth it to you because, uh, look, if you haven't already subscribed, uh, we're trying to get the message out here about uh, to all the agents that are considering it in the, this industry or uh, may have already been in, be in the industry but maybe at the wrong place and because that's you know unfortunately the way the industry tends to work and there's just so much bad information out there motivated by recruiters who want to recruit you they don't want to support you they don't want to train you and they don't want to give you good leads but they want to recruit you so they're incentivized to kind of have that word spin, you know, word salad. You know, you're not getting the whole detail. Look, as we know, because it's a political season right now, you can take any event and have and, and spin it either positive or negative. And that tends to happen a lot in this industry too. But uh, listen, even if you don't, if you, if you haven't, if you're not a subscriber, I would be grateful if you subscribed and uh, help me grow the channel. And uh, it gives an encouragement to keep doing this stuff and kind of, you know, give you, look, it doesn't matter if you, if, you know, this is not a recruiting channel. This is an information channel. Obviously, I'm growing my own agency. I have for 30 years. I think we do a very, very good job in those three years I just talked to you about. And, uh, you know, our success proves it. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, at the end of the day, at least we can have a conversation on, on YouTube. And if you want to text me, you want to call me, you want to email me, we can discuss what you're looking for because I really think it's different for everybody. Uh, there are three things that most people are looking for, like I said, support, training, and, and leads. But if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. But if you aren't a subscriber and you don't want to subscribe, at least give me the thumbs up if you got value from this channel because that helps me grow the channel. Thumbs up, thumbs down, it's all engagement. YouTube really looks like it's the same, but the thumbs up gives me the uh, encouragement to continue on. But like I said, uh, I, I want to talk to you a little bit about leads. The title of the video is Leads, Leads, and Liars. There's a lot of misinformation going on around there, and I get it. I hear it all the time. There's a particular IMO out there that's got their owner up there always doing a video about how you should quit if you don't conform or, 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 or to his ideas of what a good IMO is. I understand, there's, again, there's two ways of looking at things. Either, you know, I look at being a quitter as being a negative. Uh, you may have made a mistake and you want to move, that's great. But the reality is if somebody's always telling you to quit and join their organization, what are they hiding? And one of those things is this. You know, there's this thing going on in the industry about, I got a board here, sandwich board, Carl Rove look, uh, if you don't know who Carl Rove is, uh, that's okay too, but he has a board like this. But it's leads and lies. And I want to talk to you about these items on this board here, and I'll show it to you here in a second. But um, uh, there's this idea out there that, you know, um, again, in my opinion, I've heard you've heard me say this before. It, your IMO, you need to be with an IMO that has a ha, has their own milling house. Uh, it's a leads based sales opportunity, and this particular person doesn't have their own mailing house, so they're spinning it to be a positive, whereas they give you access to all these lead vendors, and you can go out there and contact them yourself, and you can work out your own deal, and, you know, and you'll get leads. Okay, that's great. I mean, again, that's, that, it sounds like it's a positive, but in my opinion, it's a negative. Really, what you need to have is both, and here's why. Uh, before I get off on a tangent, let me, let me get through this, this, this thought. Here's why. Because... If your IMO does the mailing and they, and they do the mailing for their own agents, they can control the quality and the quantity of the lead. Okay? They're not in the lead selling business. They're in the, they're in the lead business because it, it's the means to the end. They're in the insurance selling business. So typically, now it's not the case with all IMOs, there's one out there that has 
you know, 50 cent leads, all, you know, $1, $2, $4, $5, $6, $6 whatever. You got 19 different levels. But again, they're trying to resell a lead over and over and over again because the only way they can recover their cost, supposedly, is by, you know, someone along the line selling their insurance. Our IMO, IMO is very much the same, except we only have three lead, lead levels. And that is this is that the A agent gets it first. It's brand new, fresh, never been called before by an agent, at least not an agent with that IMO. You have to understand these people are filling out a lot of these letters, so it doesn't necessarily mean they haven't talked to somebody else. It just means it's fresh and hasn't been talked to very much, okay, if, if at all, right? And it depends on your area and how saturated it is with the agents and all that stuff. But, you know, just stay on point here. So that that A agent has it exclusively. It's not rental. You own the lead forever, but you have exclusive rights to that lead for seven to 10 weeks with most IMOs. Okay, that's what it is with our, with our IMO. I can't really speak for anybody else's. I know one other IMO that I used to be with, you can Google that and find out, that you know they, they talk about you know they have hundreds of thousands of leads, and they do, but that means the lead never leaves the system. It just rotates, right? And it gets recycled, re, you know, repurposed, and you know whatever. Um, and so you don't want that. You want an IMO that removes the lead once that lead has been sold some insurance. So you have a good chance of getting on the phone with them, booking an appointment, going to the home. Even if you follow another agent, that you don't know what that agent tried to sell them or how good they were or how much of a people person they were. You got to care about people. You got to take time, build like, know, and trust. You got to offer them the right product based on their medical conditions that fits their budget. That's the that's the that's the game in the nutshell. Okay, and, then, and, and because this industry is so motivated by those network marketers out there, there's millions of people out there that are calling themselves agents that don't have a clue. And it's, no really, it's, not, it's not really necessarily on them because they don't have any supportive training, right? So they're kind of thrown to the wolves to figure out themselves. And they make a lot of mistakes and they go into the homes, they make a fool of themselves, they, they, they get the, the clients declined or not covered at all. And then, you, you know, it, it's a mess, Okay. And they don't buy from anybody else. And so you got to be really, really good when you go in the home. Our agents go in there, we do what I call a know-before-you-go system. They're, they're, they pre-qualify it. They have a plan of action. They have support before, during, and after the sale. By us, not the IMO, by this agency. Okay, so uh, you that's an advantage to have an IMO that has a lead program, regardless of the do, you, you should quit nonsense that you hear on this other IMO. And I'm not going to mention anybody's names, okay, but you've probably seen it before. That's in, you know, they're spinning it to be a positive. I perceive it as a negative. Here's the facts. All top producers in this industry, they are working multiple lead vendors, usually. Okay? It depends on the geographical area and how uh, saturated that area is with agents and the lead availability. If you're in a remote area that the, lead, that the real estate uh, information is good, the real estate market is good, and uh, the refis are good, you may be very well served by your IMO in that area with all the leads that you want to buy, right? But if you're sitting in the middle of Atlanta somewhere or Dallas or whatever, and there's a ton of, Orlando, there's a ton of agents, that IMO can only serve up so many fresh brand new leads, right? Based on the demand from their agent base in that county or in that city. And that's why having multiple lead vendors are important, but that's also the why that, that not having one is a negative. Because, it, the, again, that IMO is serving you fresh leads to its agent, agent base. The other third-party vendors will sell the lead over and over and over and over and over and over again because they're in the lead selling business. They want to make a profit, so they don't really care, don't track, whatever, the lead, how many times the lead's been sold. So that's a negative, right? So understand the word salad. You know, I believe you ought to be with an IMO that has a lead program that removes the lead when the lead's been sold insurance and does control the quality and the quantity. It doesn't repurpose, recycle, or redate their leads. That's our IMO, okay? Now, I also believe the power of the agency that provides an ongoing day-to-day, case-by-case, paint by numbers system to teach you the success is equally as important as the IMO you choose, but 99 out of 100 times you call me, you folks call me from YouTube, it's, it's what's the best IMO. It's really not, a, I mean, you could be with our IMO, which I think is the best, but with a lousy recruiter that doesn't know anything about the industry, doesn't provide any support. See, all these agencies operate differently underneath the IMO. You need to understand that. So what you're looking for is really turning both dials. Best IMO, great agency that provides wonderful support and can prove it and can show it to you, okay? So what do I mean by, let's get on with the content of the video, metrics-based system, okay? 
what really ticked me off and set me off with this video is I got an email from somebody, uh, I don't know, a couple days ago that said, well, I've been talking to, you know, four or five different people and, you know, they told me I need to spend $450 a week or at least a thousand, you know, 3,000 bucks a month. How in the hell would that person know what you need to spend for leads? Unless they, because again, it's not, it's not a one size, see my notes? It's not a one size fits all decision. Okay, it's a metrics-based system. What does that mean? It means that based on the, the, the type of lead, I can tell you what the conversion factor is for that lead. In other words, how many leads you're going to need to produce the number of appointments that you're looking for. Three A leads, one sale. You know, 10 you know, B leads or historical leads, 10 one sale or one appointment. Okay, uh, uh, C leads are different. So they're, you know, I can tell you because it doesn't really change. Uh, the quality of the lead, the age of the lead, and the quality of the lead determines the conversion factor. Here's a hidden secret for you, since we're talking about leads. You can make sales or free leads, and you should work, you know, work your warm market, your friends, family, and neighbors. You know, you should be asking for referrals, all that stuff. You can get free leads, right? But none of that stuff is consistent, right? And it depends. It comes, the only reason why good producers are incentivized to move to the more expensive leads is merely from a matter of efficiency. It's all about time. You either enjoy the phone or you don't, or you understand that being out there in the field, kneecap and kneecap, and you know, across the kitchen table with a prospect that has raised their hands and said, hey, I want some information, it's more valuable than grinding it out on the phone, getting hung up on and swear at. Okay, so that's you know, and, and, the, and again, and the older the older the lead, the more the, you know, the, the more they, people they talk to, they may have already bought or whatever, or you figured out they couldn't be qualified. You're going to get more pushback, and most people don't really enjoy that, quite frankly. So they move to the newer leads, right? But that's why I'm saying it's a metrics-based system. It's not complicated. How many leads do you need to need to buy a week? How much do you need to spend? Well, that t depends on your income goal. That's why I said this guy has no idea how you unless he's had he's had that. That conversation with you I call it a game plan interview unless he's had that conversation with you to determine how much you want to make and what your budget looks like he can't tell you what you need to spend on leads right it's not an arbitrary figure it's not a one-size-fits-all it's metrics based so we can figure it out pretty quickly if you tell me hey Steve I want to make you know six figures a year I can tell you exactly based on maybe let's, let's just let's just say well, you're, you're a brand new agent you have a minimum of a 50% closing ratio. That's my 10-6-3 program. 10 appointments, you'll see 6 to 8. You'll write 3 to 5 apps. Each app's worth about 1000 bucks. That's three to $5,000 a week in APV. That's a six-figure income, right? So how many leads, if you, if you want to set 10 appointments, you want to make six figures, how many leads do you need to buy? Because that's going to determine your budget, right? Or how much money you need to have in your budget to be able to, to make six figures. Well, that's going to depend on what type of leads you're working. If you're working A leads and spending more money for them, you'll need less. If you're working historical leads, depending on the age, you, you can figure it out very quickly. If you're working B leads, you might need 100. You might need 50. If you're, looking, if you're working leads that are free, you might need 500. I don't know. The general rule of thumb is 250 bucks for leads, 250 dials, sets 15 appointments, and gets you 10 apps. Right? Now, you may not have 250 bucks to start out with. That's fine. You, I, can, I can spend an hour with you on the phone a couple of days a week, and we can go out there and find some warm market and cold market business because everybody needs our product. Here's the stats. According to Lemra, 39% of the people in this country have life insurance. Half of those don't have enough. It's work-related, right? And so the, at least three out of four people you run into have none. That's free business. And even if you're working the leads-based program or leads-based opportunity, you should always be looking for referrals and that free business, right? That's the way, it's, you know, you're, you're an insurance. You sell what everybody needs and everybody, you know, they may not want it because they haven't talked to you yet to understand why they should want it, but they certainly need it. And you know that being passionate about what we're doing is a large part of this business, right? So, you know, you want to be looking for that kind of business all the time, the free business that's out there, referrals, and like I said, talking and engaging in conversation with people. You can very quick, look, we get paid so much money in this industry, the margins are hysterical, right? It should be illegal, but it's not, right? You go out there and make one sale, you might make, you know, seven, eight, nine hundred bucks, direct deposit in your bank account the next day, the day after the policy is issued. 
Well, you do that two or three times a week with a warm market, a cold market, running into people and say, hey, can I, can I look at what you got? Maybe I can offer you the, the, old, the new kind of insurance. You clearly have the old kind of insurance where you had to die in order to collect, right? I, the kind of insurance I'm selling that I have, I, that I represent now, I, I'm a broker. I represent the top, you know, 10, 15, 20 companies out there. It's money if you live, money if you die. I could do that all day long, and I do. That's how I make my sales, okay, right now. Uh, Angela works the lead program, and I'm working our warm market. I'm working people I run into, the store, the gas station, dry cleaners, golf course, whatever. It doesn't make any difference that because you know, those people are out there. I, I make five, ten sales a month, you know, in that respect. You know, like some Angela writes, some I write, okay? That's the point is that business is out there all the time, but it's metrics-based. If you understand the age of the lead, we can determine the conversion rate, and then all we need from there is what? Your closing ratio. I can get you to be 70, 80, 90% in the home if you're working with me. But when you start out, you might be 30 to 50%. That's what that 1063 program is. So very quickly, well, not quickly, but in a, in, a, in a half hour to 45 minutes, we can determine what you need to spend on leads. The guy on the phone trying to recruit you, trying to sell you leads, cannot determine that in five minutes or just through an email. Doesn't happen. He's doing you a disservice, and I would call it lying. Okay? The next thing is DM. Direct mail is better. Okay, look, the reason why all these companies are running the social media now because it's easier and cheaper to farm the lead, right? They can, they can offer a, you know, a trip to Bora Bora, a, you know, free car wash, free toaster, whatever. And they don't know their, you know, a lot of these places, they don't know what they're, they're filling out that form is. That's a lead. And it's cheaper to, to, to get, easier to get because it's online. A lot of people are online now. But guess what? Our market, the niche market that we work in, 55 years and older, Middle Income America, a lot of those people are not online, okay? So I'm not saying those aren't good. A lot of people are doing very well with social media leads. The conversion rate is different, however. I like direct mail and maybe mix in some of the social media stuff. You know, to, again, there's some of them out there that are doing a better job. They're, they're pre-qualifying for them. They're asking two or three questions about that are relating to insurance, which would be helpful, right? And so you can find some good ones. Going back to my point earlier, Having an IMO that has a leads program, owns their own mailing house, does their own mailing, is a huge value. Along with that, you should have five or ten other lead vendors that you can work with to kind of mix in with that IMO's lead source. So if you need 10, 15, 20 leads a month, fresh leads I'm talking about, your IMO can only provide you eight. You can mix in some others. This business is so lucrative, you don't want to be sitting around pulling your thumbs waiting for leads. That's the power of a leads-based sales program, is you can start small. As you begin to make commissions, you can reinvest it into your lead program and get more leads and scale your income. It's very simple. More leads equal more contacts, right? Equal more appointments, equal more sit-downs with the families, equals more apps. So if you want to give yourself a pay raise, that's the incredible thing about this business with everybody being furloughed. Do you own this business? This is, a, this is not an opportunity. I mean, this is not a job. It's an opportunity. You own it. So you control when you get when you work. You control when you get paid. Now, to, for some of you, that's a negative because you don't, you're not self-motivated. You're not very good at being your own boss. And that's going to be a challenge here because you're going to have nobody kicking you in the fanny and getting you out to work. The pluses is, is that now you can go out and work two or three days a week or nights or, or a combination of both and support your family, do what you need to do income-wise, and have the rest of four or five days during the week to be, to be a parent, to be a, a, a wife, to be a husband. Go travel, go fly airplanes, <laughs> or go play some golf. Whatever it is, you control that, and it's your business. But that also brings a level of discipline that you must have to survive because it's very easy to sit at home and screw around with Facebook and watch the news and get depressed with all the politic crap going on right now and do nothing. The power of it is, is that you'll never be furloughed again. You'll never be out of work again, right? You can go anywhere, any state, grab some leads, go to work, make money in 34 to 40, 36 to 48 hours, period. See, that's my dream. My dream is getting my motor home, head down the road, go visit some of my agents, go see some of my family. And look, you can only watch TV for so long and hang out with the family in the backyard. I get bored, get me some leads, and I'm going to work a couple nights while I'm there visiting. That's the beauty of this business, right? So, again, it's a metrics-based system, meaning 
based on the age of the lead, we can determine how many leads you want, and then we can figure out what your lead budget is. And as you make money, we can scale it from there and keep increasing the lead budget to the point where you're earning the kind of income that you want to earn. Again, I've already talked about no one size fits all. I've talked about this nonsense about word salad. says we don't sell leads. And you see, that's my point, is they spin it as a, a, as a positive. Well, we don't sell any leads to our agents. You know, we're not in the business of selling things to our agents. Well, we're not in the business of selling leads to our agents either. We provide leads and sell them to the, and to the agent to help them succeed in a business. We don't care if they buy our leads, and they're not required to buy our leads. We do it because we have the agent best interest in mind. So it's not an honorable thing to say you don't have a lead program. It's actually quite the opposite. You're not support, you're doing the, you're, you're going the cheap way out, okay? Uh, conversion rate, right? Um, I've already talked about the conversion rate. We know based on the age of the lead, right? The conversion rate, okay? Now, as I was going back before, I don't think I finished my, con my comment was, an A lead goes to the first agent. They always have a, you know, the rights to that age, that lead. In most cases, they have, they have the exclusive rights to it for seven to 10 weeks. Then it falls to a B lead, and it's much cheaper. I buy B leads today, right? I get my agents to buy B leads. They're cheap. They're six bucks, and they're just as good as the A lead. They've only, they may have only seen one agent before, right? But they haven't bought it. They wouldn't be in the system. Then it stays out there for 10 months or so, and it becomes a B lead for a couple of bucks. A C lead. C is in Charlie for a couple of bucks. And, you know, when you're first starting out, I think you should work the older leads, B and C. Why? You can get more objections, you can get more pushback, and that makes you a better agent. And then over time, you'll probably drop the Bs. I would always work B and C. Okay, look. All right, so success is all about lead flow and activity. My final point, there is, there is, no, <laughs> there is no better uh, philosophy or, or thing to write down than that. It's all about lead flow and activity. Even if you have no talent, right? It's not about skin color. It's not about where you, what car you drive, where you live. None of that stuff. It's about lead flow and activity. I, even if you're not very good in a home, you're not, you know, I, you, that can be taught. If you don't know anything about the products, who cares? I don't care if you know. I'm not, you, I, as long as you're working with somebody like that has like, that's a coach that can teach you the products, you know, as, you go, as you're earning. That's what we call learn while you earn. Because we're going to discuss every case with you before you go out. You're going to know just about enough to, to, uh, to make the presentation. If they have any questions for you, you pick me up at the phone. You talk to me, and I'll talk to them, help you get the deal, get them protected. It's very simple. As long as you work with somebody that, that, that provides that type of service, product knowledge is, is moot. You'll learn that over time the more families that you protect. Okay, But, again, it comes down to if you... If, if, if you're not making the kind of money that you want to make and you're currently in the business right now and you don't have a lead program or, or what, or you're not working with somebody that can help you find warm market, cold market business because you don't have a lead program, then you need to call me, right? Or call your, call your coach if they're able to have that conversation with you so you can make a few sales and start reinvesting your, 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 some of your commissions, not all of them, 10, 15%. Back into the lead program and gradually start getting your leads flow going, and then you can raise your lead flow as you start making sales to the point where, hey, I'm making six figures. I'm working two to three days a week. I'm in. I'm golden. I don't. I'm not interested in making a million dollars. I want to make six figures. I want to make two fifty a year. You know, whatever it is. But I really want to spend time with my family and do things I was put on this earth to do, which wasn't to sell insurance. It was to go out and help people, protect families. I really believe that's, that's what we, you got you to have that inside of you because, uh, you know, this is not an easy business all the time. No business is. And you need to remember that it's, it's, there's a higher calling to this. What we do matters. And we get paid very, very well, right? But it's worth pushing through the bad days, right, to find that family that really, really appreciates the fact that you came out in their home and spent time with them. The last appointment that I had, uh, these are the kind of appointments that you kind of hang on, right? It was a cold, a, 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 a cold market. Guy was working in my house, talked to him briefly, asked if he had a family, have kids. Yes. Got any life insurance? No. And I said, well, what if, you know, are you, are you the sole bread, the breadwinner in the family? Yes, I am. My wife's a disabled vet, you know, on and on, right? So I, I, he said, what is it you do? I said, well, I, I protect families like yours, right, to make sure their kids and their wife keep their home in the event they, they, were, they passed suddenly and the kids can still go to, to go to college. Basically, all their dreams are kept intact. Even though you, dad's not around anymore, you're basically taking care of them after you live as well as you took care of them while you were living. He goes, oh, I'd be interested in something like that, right? I went to that appointment 
an hour, an hour and 15 minutes away, and it ended with me sitting on the couch eating Oreos with uh, the kitchen table, sorry, with eating Oreos with the kid. Now, and then when I left, it sent me a text that, hey, listen, we're really grateful that you came to our house and we feel like we can lay our heads down on our bed tonight knowing that our family's protected and we did something good for the future. Man, that, I, I could have went through a wall after getting that message. You know, the, the next hangout is, is pointless. Remember, that's not personal. They just think you're a salesman, like you're selling cars. They don't, they don't, they don't, you know what they don't know. They don't know what they don't know, which is they're going to die one day and their families are going to be dramatically impacted, negative or positive, based on the fact, on whether or not they have life insurance, right? And so you got to keep that in front of you. But listen, don't buy into the leads, leads, and liars. You got to have a conversation and figure out what is my current cash position, right? And how and when many leads can I buy and make start making some money working warm and cold market that's free business those two things combine to start generating some commissions that I can reinvest in a, into my lead program and get my cash position up so I can buy the amount of leads I need to buy in order to make the six figures or whatever it is I need to make okay that's what you need to have that's the conversation you need to have. I hope this is valuable. It went on for about 25 minutes, but I think it, there's a live measure packed in this thing. If you like what I said and you appreciate the content, give me that thumbs up, please. Okay? And hit the subscribe button, mash the bell, and you'll get instant notifications next time I go live stream. Got a new studio work we're working on here, and now we're doing live stream more than we're doing anything else, which is great because that way it's just real. It's transparent. It's authentic. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> I can't believe you're still here. But I have one parting comment to make, and that is, is if your IMO doesn't have their own lead program, in other words, they don't control the quality and the quantity of the lead because they are the ones that are getting the data and they are the ones that are mailing it out of the mailing house that they can sell to you, to, to, that you know that you can control, again, that, that it's yours, right? And can offer you five to 10 third-party lead vendors so that if you need more leads or different leads, you also have that. Again, it's about lead flow and activity. You can never have too many great lead sources, but you do need to have a good lead source that you know that the leads have not been recycled, redid, and repurposed. So here it is. If you are with an IMO or you're talking to an IMO that does not own their own lead program, you know what you should do? You ready for this? Here it comes. <laughs> You should quit. <laughs> I gotta go. Bye-bye.